Welcome back to Good Morning Walla Land. We are here with David Gunning. He is an actor, he is a producer, he is a creative genius, and he is part of the Focus TV family. Thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. We know you've been on this epic journey of independent filmmaking. Yes. Let's talk about it. How did this all begin for you? Um, I have to say about uh, five, six, maybe seven years ago, um, I just uh, I got real tired of other people telling me that I couldn't be a part of their projects. So uh, I decided one day, okay, let's let's start to write. So then um, I started to write, and then uh, slowly but surely we started with web series. And then um, my production partner and I, John Paul, who was on the show earlier, uh, then we started creating short films, and we were doing really, really well with short films. Um, and when you mean you were doing really, really well with short mm -hmm. films, what does that look? Like? Uh, so essentially, we we have a handful of short films that have gone much all over the world. He's being very humble. Award-winning, <laughs> short films. Um, yeah, some of them are, are pretty good, pretty good. Uh -huh. uh, but you know, the the unfortunate thing about short films is that um, uh, they it's it's difficult to see them. You know, uh, distributors aren't really interested in mm -hmm. short films because short films don't uh, generally make money. Um, you know, with the exception of particular short films, like if. Kobe is in your short film, you know. Yeah. We're going to recognize so you're, that. So you're going on, you're writing, you're having some success, uh -huh, mm -hmm. and then what? Yeah, uh, so then we decided, okay, it's time to move on to feature films. Uh, and that's where the real, the real battle <laughs> really essentially comes along because uh, short films you can shoot for a lower budget and you can um, have cast members that uh, you're close with and they're willing to work for a day or work for an hour and you can get them for uh, a, a lower rate, so to say. Uh, but when it comes to the feature film and, and you know, uh, with the features, it's about, um, first off, getting all the money. So the budget. Well, first, before you even get the money, you've got to find the right script. The script that you're going to marry yourself to for years, mm -hmm. right? Correct. So what was it about Sick for Toys that you thought, you know what, I am going to embark on this? <laughs> uh, Sick for Toys, who, um, like we mentioned before, it was an a original idea by James Oster, huge horror buff. And then Justin Xavier took that and made it to a screenplay. Uh, and when we read Justin's script, it kind of hopped off the page to us. It was, this is extremely original, it's daring, um, and it's going to ruffle some people's feathers. And that to us was really important. But we know also that Christmas movies can do very well and mm -hmm. horror movies can do well. So did that mm -hmm. play into your decision? Like, Absolutely. Yeah, doing a holiday film is definitely an advantage uh, as a producer um, because if people love it, it will continue to play and continue mm -hmm. to play. And, and hopefully live on for a very long time. Uh, we've seen that with A Christmas Story, mm -hmm. obviously, which plays 24 hours uh, you know, during Christmas time. Now, uh, whether they're gonna play a thriller with you know, a little bit of blood and, and other things that might um, uh, be a little uh, outrageous to some people's eyes, um, that's, time will tell with that. Yeah. But uh, you, you, you essentially, as a producer, you, you roll the dice, you gamble, and hopefully you you hit, and uh, um, and then you know you you uh, can move forward right. in, a, in a positive manner. So let's manner. get a little like into this because you're married. Correct. I'm I'm assuming you don't have children yet because you're pretty young. Do you uh, have children? One on the way. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So let's. So I mean, I think it's. I think it's brilliant to do a horror and and Christmas, and I think it's fun to just have all expressions. So, but having said that. Do you, what do you feel about like kids like maybe getting scared out and creeped out about Christmas and holidays? Like, mm -hmm. does that have you thought about that? Have you thought about what that um, might do? Well, yes, yes, and no. I mean, uh, it's definitely geared towards an an older audience. But what I can say is that I think when you get creeped out as a kid, as you get older, you can tell that story of. Ah oh, man, yeah, I remember when I was little and I was watching this film and I was really creeped out and I had to run up <laughs> to my bedroom and it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> but 
horror films really create lifelong memories. You remember the, how you felt you that you were scared, that fear lived on, and it becomes a good story. And I think that's what's so unique about the genre of horror. Mm -hmm. More so even than a romantic comedy. Oh, I laughed at this movie. No, I was terrified. <laughs> we hid under the covers. And that's really something very special to give to audiences. Yeah, I've always felt that the kind of the, the, the crazier the story or the more horrific the story, the more interesting it is. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know about... Um, you know everybody else, but personally for myself, uh, a, a safe story generally isn't very interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people go, you tell a story and it's really kind of boring, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so, like, speaking of that, so you know, in terms of the story itself, can you give us sort of lay out the premise a little bit of the movie? Sure. Um, so as we know, it's a thriller. It's uh, during Christmas time, um, and uh, not to give too much away, it's really about. Uh, a, a guy who is kind of down on his luck. Uh, he's he's the uh, guy who always finishes last. He's the nice guy, um, and he runs into this uh, real um, pretty girl. Just it so always happens. starts with a pretty girl. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so it goes down downhill. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. um, you know, he's 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 searching for his best friend, um, and through searching through the best friend, that's how he runs into the pretty girl. And then um, uh, they connect. And um, from what you can see from one of the trailers, they, they connect as well. And then things go downhill very quickly. No. That, that, that's what I can tell mm -hmm. you, essentially, without spoiling anything. Well, let's <laughs> take a look at the trailer for Sick for Toys. Glad you called me back. What's going on? Everything okay? This is gonna sound crazy. It's Jason. I haven't heard from him since yesterday morning. Could you try to call him for me? I doubt he's gonna pick up my phone call. I'll just go straight to his place. <laughs> Jason! You in there? Nothing's out of place. His computer was still there. What about his car? That wasn't there. My name's Roy. I think you know my friend Jason. Uh, we were supposed to go on a date the other day, but you blew me off. Are you Roy? I love decorating. Stringing up the lights, hanging the wreaths, and... You should come over for dinner tonight. Tonight? 6.30. We have a guest coming tonight. I don't want to have to gag you. <laughs> Hello? The house is over here. I thought I heard something. Thought maybe Amelia was in there. She's inside. I just thought he might want to play with my Christmas present. I just want to go home. As long as I give him medicine, you'll be able to play with him a while longer. just because this was a super scary trailer, but because I want this to succeed so much. I know that you have put your heart, your soul into building this as an entrepreneur and as a producer. So what was it like for you to raise the funds to make that? Well, um, if you've ever begged for something <laughs> <laughs> and just had people kind of not even pay attention to you, uh, walk right by you, act like you're nobody, you're nothing, um, you know, kind of laugh, mock, whatever, uh, you know, oh, I have this idea, <laughs> great, so does everybody else, yeah, be gone. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how, how it was. I mean, mm. it, it, it was difficult, just, just, you know, begging for the money, begging for the opportunity to be able to create some And you did this on a, an ultra low budget. Yeah, very, very low budget, um, but I think that we made the most out of what we had, and I think that's really the key. Um, there are a lot of uh, monster budgeted films or low budgeted films. And I found that the films that do the best are really the films that uh, have quote unquote lightning in the bottle. And um, you know, instead of focusing on having a, a, a big star or um, something that kind of takes 
all of your attention away as far as you know too much blood or too much killing or too much of one thing we focused on everything kind of being universal and all flowing together and creating that lightning so that uh, it was more about the entire product as opposed to um, you know just one singular thing you know hmm. blowing things up <laughs> yeah. and what's Stuff great like about that, yeah. that too is you make it for a smaller budget right which mm -hmm. you can really do in horror and the return can be that much bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we pray for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, you know, um, what's unfortunate? Uh, what you can there's been a pattern lately is uh, there's a lot of big, big budgeted films, and and um, uh, sometimes they do really well. You have you know things like Avengers and Star Wars and all that. And there's some films that. Um, you know, don't do so hot, so you might not meet that original huge chunk of money. Well, you might have some merch. You could have some really scary gifts that they can open that are just like some <laughs> yeah. re Christmas presents that really scare you. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, well, but uh, what we're hoping for is that yeah, we, we shot low, and uh, our main goal with this was really, really to earn uh, the industry's respect and to uh, uh, garnish um, more opportunities so that we can eventually create films with bigger budgets. So what would you say to producers who want to do what you have done? What is it that you wish you would have known before you did this? Oh man, uh, that's a tough one. Uh, Buy a monster bottle of patience. <laughs> <laughs> they sell that? I'm not I need a lot of that. Sell that somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Patience, just be so patient because when you think you have one thing finished or you think that one phase is coming to an end or you, ha you think that you have one thing wrapped up, it's going to take a little longer. Mm -hmm. And then once that's done, there's always something else that you need to move forward with. So essentially, a, a producer's job is never over. It really isn't. Um, it's kind of amazing. I really respect... Um, any anyone who takes the dive as a producer, uh, and especially with these big, big budgeted films, because when you watch the credits, it's just lying <laughs> <laughs> with all these names, and I, I'm I'm staring at the screen, and I'm thinking they had to pay every single <laughs> <laughs> so dollar signs rolling by. Yeah, yeah, I just see dollar signs. Like, uh, there's John Smith. Okay, that oh, that was a lot of money right, right. there. I mean, yeah. you look in your like, sound department, 2,000 people. Color right. department, 2,000 people. <laughs> right? Yeah, it really yeah. is amazing to see. But it, it's art, and that art takes an entire community. So, so beautiful. And congratulations on everything. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And all the people out there, I know lots of people that are creating art, creating movies, creating whatever. I know that it's been a long haul for a lot of them. And so stick with it, patience for sure. So thanks for that message. It's very important for everyone. Thank you, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. so much. And where can they find the movie? Uh, well, October 1st, we will be uh, making our official release mm -hmm. through uh, uh, Entertainment Studios uh, Digital Department, which is Freestyle Digital Media. Um, you will be able to find it um, through iTunes, video on demand, uh, cable, Redbox, uh, pretty much every every avenue. Um, and in the meantime, you can like, follow, and share. Mm -hmm. uh, Sick for Toys on Facebook, Sick for Toys on Instagram, and then Sick for Toys <laughs> on Twitter. Because huh. at that point, they weren't allowing the uh, so many letters. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Well, yeah. you got it. I'm Sick for Toys. What do you want for Christmas? <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be back with more on Good Morning Wildlands.